Man. All right, new topic. Listen, listen. I'm Jewish, and I love having dialogues with people who don't have the same beliefs that I do. I want you guys to do dawa on me. I'm a Jewish person who encourages people to become Jewish. Would you allow me to present my dawa to you, and then you present your dawa to me? Uh, yeah, don't keep it too long. Two minutes. Sure. Well, let me, let me add, before you start your dawa, right? You sure. Do, um, do you really want me? As a black man from the hells of North America to become a Jew. <laughs> Rob, let, sure. let him. Let him say. Are your arms wide open? You want to hug me and embrace me? Maybe. He okay, no problem. No, I wanted to make be clear. No Hello. problem. For sure. I'll give you a hug, brother. I'm good. I'm good, man. I'm relaxed. Trust me. <laughs> I want everyone to come to the truth. Just like I'm sure you want everyone to come to the truth. The Torah actually teaches that on Mount Sinai there was a mixed multitude of peoples. But just to chime in on what you guys were talking about, Judaism also considers it forbidden for a Jew to beat on another Jew and also to walk around without a shirt. And everything that's Islamic is ultimately Jewish. Islam was an Arabized form of Judaism. Virtually every Islamic law has its roots either in Torah or in our Hadith, which what we call oral law. But whether it's wearing a hijab, most people don't know that the Talmud says that a woman has to wear a hijab, but it's the European Jews who changed it. Prostrating when we pray. Jews also pray five times a day. It's just split up in three sections. They're very similar to Islam. I think I could demonstrate that there's really no need for Islam because we already have Judaism. We already have the Torah. But anyways, my dawah goes like this. If there's nothing ultimately ethically new that appears in the Quran, I'm pretty sure you guys would acknowledge that anything ethical, ethical, not ceremonial. In other words, there's a distinction between acknowledging that Muhammad was the final prophet and a command to take care of a widow or orphan, a stranger, feeding the hungry. One is ethical and one is ceremonial. There's nothing ethically new that's in the Quran that doesn't have its roots initially in the Torah. In other words, if the Almighty was going to give us a playbook to go by, you figure he'd be giving us an ethical progression, not just a progression in narrative and ceremony. In other words, the only place where the Quran differs from the Torah is a narrative, in narrative and in the ceremonial. It doesn't differ on anything ethical. The Quran is ethical because it has an ethical base, which was the God of Israel, the Torah. And then later on, Islam taught that God in some way progressed the revelation through Gabriel, giving that revelation over to Muhammad, who supposedly couldn't read and was told to recite. One minute but remaining. If something's older, and just as ethical, that should abolish the need of something newer that only claims to improve on the narrative. It seems it would behoove someone who's looking for religion to go with what's older. Islam can't exist without Judaism, but Judaism could still exist without Islam because it came before. So if you guys would have to do it again, would you guys consider becoming Jewish instead of converting to Islam? Okay, can Thank I just make the first person, can I be the first person to make a point here? Go ahead. Um, yeah, the, um, the Torah, the, the, the Psalms, the Gospel, the Quran, all given by the same God, we believe as Muslims, yeah? All prophets and messengers came with the same message, uh, to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to believe in one God, and to reject the false gods, to reject false worship or false idols, yeah? Now, when it comes to the Quran, the Quran was sent and the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam sent, was for, sent for all of mankind and every single person. Every message before was sent to their individual people. Jesus, peace be upon him, says in the Bible that I have not come of Israel. Noah, peace be upon him, was sent to his people. Moses was sent to Pharaoh and his people. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Quran came for the whole of mankind and the, for everyone. So there's a huge difference. And when it comes to the Quran, it Allah exposes and he tells us of how the people of the book, which are the Jews and the Christians, how they changed the book, how they changed things, how they, you know, sold their religion for a small price. Allah has exposed everything in the Quran. So when it comes to Islam, you know, it is timeless. It's from now until, you know, forever. You could get rid of every single book in the world and memorization alone, you'd bring the Quran back 100%. That's not a proof I'm trying to put there forward to you that it is, but to, like, you know, this word itself and being an ex-Christian myself and looking into 
uh, Judaism and Christianity and Buddhism and Sikhism and you know every you know majority of religions when it comes to Islam the clarity I had within it yeah there's one God don't worship anyone but him ask no one for help but accept him he sent prophets and messengers I mean it can't get more really simple than that honestly there's a lot of misinformation going on in terms of what the Torah actually says, and that's because people study the Torah through other books, either through the eyes of Jesus or through the Quran. But it seems like the Torah only lays down one standard, not for Israel, because clearly states that Israel left Egypt with a mixed multitude of peoples. Ruth was a Moabitess. Jethro was a Midianite. God only gives one standard, not just for the Hebrew, but for the whole world to worship him in the proper manner. Now, I understand that a later religion would have to find the need to do away with the earlier system to justify itself, but it can't corrupt what appears in the initial system. And that's that the Torah, God's instructions, was for everybody. And some even say that Muhammad himself wanted to become a Hebrew. He wanted to be part of Israel and the Jews in his time, they misbehave. They didn't welcome him properly. And he went and he broke off and he started his own movement. Do you and have proof for that? Or is that just a random accusation? This is just a random accusation, but you also don't have proof how the Torah itself is corrupt. Although it claims, the Quran itself claims that the Torah is corrupt, but there's no proof of that. But the what, uh, is, uh, uh, there's many me. that could show you it is. But, yeah, oh, no, but excuse me, that's what, What's your yes. name, uh, tradition? Asher. Asher, my name is Asher, yeah? Hi. Doesn't your own scripture say that woe to the scribes who change the uh, things from their hands, change the scripture of their hands and say it's from God? Doesn't your own scripture say that? No, that's the Christian Bible. The, Christ the Christian Bible, okay. But you know why I couldn't become a Jew, yeah? There's certain things um, in the Jewish scripture that I can't accept and don't make sense for me. For example, uh, Jacob, um, why was his name changed to Israel? Because Israel means one who struggles with God. When he I understand fought, that. Uh -huh. I understand, but what was the, the scenario that led to that? The ultimate scenario was when he fought against the angel of Asa, of Esau, which was a messenger of God. In many cases, God appears to humans as a messenger. It's. I it's, know the situation. See, right, okay. basically, How can basically God Jacob was supposed to wrestle with God and beat him and, and in a man form. And basically, this man who J Jacob was wrestling with, yeah, said, uh, Jacob said to him, I will not let you go. He's wrestling, wrestling with him till daybreak. And then Jacob said to this person who's supposed to be God, I will not let you go until you bless me. And then he, yeah, the man blesses him who's supposed to be God. And he says, now I will name you Israel because you wrestled with man and one and you wrestled with God and one. Is that, have I got the story right? Yes, that's one instance where Israel is attached to him because of that. But his whole life, he was wrestling with the existence of God, with his path in life. I understand how that could be seen as a limitation. I'm not really no, trying but... to water it down. However, we have texts that predate the Quran for no, many, but... many hundreds of years. I'm just saying, if the Torah was but, corrupted... But do you know why that why... doesn't make sense? Uh -huh. he, he, Jacob was a prophet of God. Yeah? Two things don't make sense about that. Was Jacob rested in, Jacob was a prophet of God, but he was he had doubts about if God existed or God God's. If, if he, are you saying that Jacob, who was a prophet of God, doubted Jacob if God wasn't exists? a prophet of God? Judaism no, doesn't. In, in your scripture, in your scripture, in our scripture, we don't view Jacob, David, or any other individual that Islam calls no, them all prophets. Scripture. Your scripture, right. you, who scripture is Jacob in your scripture? Jacob is not a prophet of God. Who is so? Who is he? Why is he in there? Who is he? Jacob is the son of Isaac, who's the son of Abraham. Is Isaac a prophet? No. So who is Jacob? Is he a believer? Is he a disbeliever? What is he? In your, what, is, what is his role in your narrative? What Islam does, it takes all the biblical heroes. No, or don't worry about Islam. I know famous characters. No. In other words, we see in Torah that Kohanim or priests predate the giving of the Torah, but no one would say... Jethro Cohen or Jethro the priest. The same goes for prophets. I'm sure that historically Navi prophet meant something before the Torah, colloquially, even amongst pagans. But according to Torah, prophecy began with Moses. And after the model that he laid down, with the exception that Moses sealed the giving of the Torah and the job of the prophet or future prophets was only to bring people back to Moses' initial revelation. So no, 
we don't hold Adam, David, Isaac, or Jacob as prophets but Jacob was a in prophet. Judaism. I'm trying to make a distinction between what you guys believe and what Judaism believes, just so you can see the difference here. But we don't consider every character that appears in the Bible as a prophet, even though they communicate with God in certain instances like Abraham. Abraham's not considered a prophet either. The job okay. of a prophet, according to the Torah, is someone who brings you back to Torah. And mind you, that instance of Jacob wrestling with the angel is not Torah necessarily. Torah means instruction. That's not an instructional portion in the Torah. The instruction means the instructions of what we call Torah nowadays, which is do not kill, do not kidnap, keep the Sabbath. That's what Torah means. Now, the narrative could be borrowed from other ideas, but that doesn't make or break our religion. What makes Judaism exceptional is that ethically it works. Apart no, from the you narrative. Don't my, you don't answer my question. I'm answering the question. This story, sure. was, this, this, this story is in your book. Mm -hmm. I'm going to answer you. Jacob was wrestling with this angel. Now, in our belief, that angels only do good. They're on God's side, yeah? Now, Jacob, this man, is Jacob a good man or a bad man in your philosophy, in your, in your, in your, in your system of belief? Jacob starts off as a bad man, and he slowly becomes better, and then he's considered righteous towards the end of his life. However, okay. angels... See, Islam takes a lot of ideas from rabbinic Judaism. The notion of an angel in Hebrew, malach, just means messenger. It doesn't necessarily mean a being, a heavenly being. Here, sometimes with the word malachim, which just means earthly messengers. It says that Jacob sent malachim to greet his brother Esau, Asaph. And it's talking about humans. Now, yes, the Torah does describe God appearing to people, sometimes in human form. That I can't whitewash. It's there, black and white. Now, Islam is built off of Judaism's monotheistic streak. Now, with the notion of monotheism is ultimately not a Torah value. I'm a monotheist. That means he's unlike every other god. But Islam, because it's ultimately built off of rabbinic Judaism, pushes the notion of monotheism in its core. And I appreciate Islam for doing that. But the okay. Torah in itself doesn't present God that monotheistic. Okay. The point I'm trying to make is this, that I've read the scripture and there's a part in it where after this fight or this struggle, yeah, where it says that you wrestled with man and one and you wrestled with God and one, so I would name you Israel. But the point I'm trying to make with you, this man was wrestling with an angel. I'm trying to understand, this is why I'm saying, this is one of the things that doesn't make sense to me. And I'm not talking about from a crowd of view, just a, just a normal, of just a human being. This man wrestles with an angel, yes? Now, is this the, is this the end of... Is this when um, Jacob was a good man? At this time, he was a good man. Too. Okay, and the angel is good, yes? The angel initially was considered the angel of Asaph. He was fighting against Jacob, but it was ultimately a test. The angel initially attacks Jacob. Jacob thought that he was out to hurt him, and he dislocates his hip. In other words, but these guys are trying to hurt each other here. Okay, I know, you know, but is the angel from God? Is he a representative of God? Yes. And it okay. ended up being God himself. Uh, that's what I'm saying. It don't make sense. Why is an angel who is a representative of God fighting with a good man? It don't no, make no. sense. If you want to compare portions in the Torah that don't make sense to portions in the Quran that don't I'm make sense. I'm not comparing it to the Quran. I'm there not comparing no it to the Quran at all. This story is not in the Quran. Angels will not be fought in with a righteous no, man no, because no, angels... No, 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 no. Okay, I'm, I'm a little bit confused. So you're saying David and Jacob were not prophets in the Torah? Correct. No, he doesn't believe they're prophets. Right, they're not because prophets. Because my understanding you have like 48 prophets in the in the Torah, or in Judaism, there's 48 prophets. And Jacob well, and Islam, um, David. I mean, according to... No, no, I'm, 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 I'm talking about... Uh, uh, I'm talking about in, in Ju Judaism. Uh, if you go anywhere and read up I mean, about the Torah... About... Rabbi, I'll tell you that Jacob's never called Prophet Jacob or Prophet David. Jeff, I mean, you could come into this, yeah, but he said that he doesn't believe they're prophets. My point is this. Okay, cool. I'm not comparing this to the Quran. You keep on referring to me with referring to I'm not going to I'm just saying there's a normal human being. This doesn't make sense. Okay, in your thing, Jacob was righteous at this time, and the angel was righteous. So they were both good people, and in basically, I could say, God saw them as good people. These two good people are fighting. Why are they fighting? It don't make and, sense. Yeah, absolutely. But there's things in Torah that we can't explain. Exactly. Like so that's why I do. I would, no, no, wait, so, so you're about to say that's why I'm going to throw out the whole system. No, I'm saying I can't accept your book. 
because it doesn't make sense to me. Okay, and what right. I'm saying is this story, not even this, because I've talked to people who said that this person, not not only was he a, that this person he was wrestling with was an angel, they I've heard many people tell me literally this was God in man form. And I'm sure you know there's there's Jews that believe this, yeah? Okay, uh, I'm asking you, was that man God? We don't know exactly what these stories in particular are trying to tell us always. So there's different book? interpretations. I no. said that the Torah are the instructions within what people call Torah nowadays. The instructions is what makes it exceptional. Now, this is really a scenario of the best being an enemy of the better. In other words, you're never going to find a book that's 100% explainable. And everyone gives an explanation. There's many rabbis who could explain these things away. But I really wish that the Torah was clearer here, which it argues for its authenticity. In other words, it doesn't give you things so easily for you to understand, at least in the narrative, because the law is like a lot of confusion. And I'm huh? glad I oh. got this in Islam. <laughs> but what well, I would say, oh, I'll end with, I'll end with this, and I'll let someone else take over. Allah mm -hmm. says in the Quran, in Surah Al-Baqarah, this is a book in which there is uh, no doubt in it. Uh, there is no doubt in it. And that's why I choose to be Muslim. One God, yeah, none of these gods, two good people fighting each other for no reason and so forth or god becoming a man and wrestling with someone else but i told you i've read the verse myself it said now you've wrestled with man and one and you've wrestled with god and one i will name you israel but i would just say uh oh, thank you for your time way, and this is the reason why i can't be was um sure, uh, sure. Jew. no problem not on, online yeah i don't know if um this guy agrees with it it's, i've forgotten his name what was your name again my name asher. is asher asher, asher. Uh, jacob was a prophet and it says that king david and king solomon were also prophets where says that Abigail, who also became the wife of King David, was a prophet. But she was a prophet, uh, female, it says here, female prophet. I don't know, I'm on the um, virtual Jewish library. That's what, they, that's what they're saying. So there's another instance, there's a few other instances where God actually appears to people in human form. And it doesn't give further explanation, which shows that it's not a book of confusion because it's building off a theme. Now, only because... Like someone doesn't have the hubris to try to explain what they think that means in an objective manner. What doesn't mean it's a book of confusion. It just appears like that more than once. Like when Abraham is confronted by three strangers and then at the end, it gives an understanding that one of those strangers is God. It's almost a bit pompous for someone to say, I know what that means. However, that's not what makes this book special. Torah is the instructions, but clearly what the legends laid down by Moses after the Torah was given is what the brother was discussing, which is the chapters in the book of Genesis. But if you really wanted to compare what's accurate, because he said that there's no errors in the Quran. I mean, if you really just compare historical errors, like comparing Miriam, the sister of Moses, to being related to Isa, if there's something that you consider an inconsistency because you've adopted a certain monolithic ideal now, that you consider an inconsistency with your current view, that doesn't compare with all the proven inconsistencies in the Quran, which is built off of rabbinic legend. Like for example, that famous statement that says that one who destroys a person is like he destroyed the whole world is a rabbinic quote, but it attributes it to a divinely inspired message from God. And there's many things that Islam claims to have created, but just sort of took and recycled from Judaism. Never said it created anything. It's just bringing back the message that it was given to all the prophets before. Right, so you I'm, I'm not sure why you think that. I'm not. I'm not sure why you think that Islam created something totally new, and then we just uh, and it just symbolizes uh, the Torah. Islam is nothing new. Muslims and Islam has been there since Adam and Eve. You know That's what I'm a saying? Of faith. Of course. No, what, 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 is, what, does Islam, what does Islam and Muslim mean? It means, it means submission, submission to God. Correct. Exactly, right? And, and all prophets submitted to God. At the time of uh, Moses, they submitted to God. At the time of Isa al-Islam, they submitted to God. At the time of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they submitted to God. But what, but what the Quran and uh, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, sallam said was that the Quran was revealed as the last seal of the Quran that could not be changed. Because in the Torah and in the Jew, God does not say, or Allah does not say that um, these cannot be changed. That's why it was so easy for, and that's why it says in the Quran that these scriptures have the been way. changed by hand. Where did it say that? It says it twice in the Torah. It says don't add or take that, away from that the, that the scriptures cannot be changed? It says do not add or take away from these words. 
I don't know, but does it say that it protects it from not being changed? Absolutely. Like Judaism doesn't accept the notion of progressive revelation, which is no, why. No, but does God does God say that in the in the Torah that says, I have made this book that and I protected it so it could not be changed by any man or and, it makes, or, or by end. I'll say it in Hebrew. It says Lo Tosef Alav. Don't add to it. Belo Tigram Emenu, and don't take away from it. It's okay, exactly. It says don't add to it, don't take away from it because why? Because they knew that, or Allah knew that you guys were going to be adding to it and taking away from it, and it gave you sense. why not? It gave you a it gave you a strict it gave you a strict um advisement that he knew that someone's going to be adding and changing to it. You guys just never followed his instructions, and you guys changed it, right? Now in the Quran it says that I've 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 um I've secured the Quran, so it can't be changed. That's a big difference. Between don't add to it, don't change it. It says that I've I've secured the Quran where it can, or I've I've made the Quran where it cannot be changed, right? So he's protected the Quran. Allah has protected the Quran. It doesn't say he protected the Torah. It doesn't say he protected the Injil. It says he protected the Quran mm -hmm. from being changed, right? So there's a big difference between don't add and change and I protected the Quran. Brother, can I ask wait, some wait, questions wait, 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 as well? Wait. You're saying that it makes more sense for there to be no law to add or take away from it versus God just saying, don't worry about adding or taking away from it because I'm going to ensure that it's pure. In other words, every generation could have added a hundred more surahs to the Quran and you would never know it because you're trusting a statement within the Quran that says no, that- because it was memorized. It was memorized, right? It well, was memorized. It was easy to memorize. The laws in the Torah were given to a society. They were laws that were adjudicated by a court that would put you to death, that would fine you. In other words, you're saying that laws are ultimately meaningless as long as the text will tell you that God will ensure either your survival or the authenticity of your text. That makes more sense to you? But that there shouldn't be a law. In other words, God shouldn't say don't murder because God could just say that I'm going to ensure that no one actually murders, that if anyone kills, they're doing it for self-defense. I mean, it doesn't really make any sense. Can I ask well, a question, please? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so... In, when Asher started talking, he, he, um, in his um, presentation, he put forward that um, he wants us to convert to Judaism. Well, not just us, but everybody to convert to, I think, Jews Judaism. Actually, before I continue, what type of Jew are you? What's the c categorization of your, of your point of view? Orthodox. Is that, that's, what, that's it. It's not like Hasidic or, or some other type of term. It's just Orthodox. Orthodox. I'm not Hasidic. Okay. All right. Thank you. So the, the question I've got is as follows. Well, let me under, understood, make sure I understood correctly what Asher was saying. His point is that he wants uh, uh, people to become Jews and to follow the Torah. And he sees no difference between Islam and the Torah apart from the um, action-based things. As for the core beliefs and morals and ethics, then they're identical. And if people were to view that side of the Torah, then they wouldn't see a need for Islam. And, and the he ethical. Said that you, yeah. The and ethical. he said that you, you, you guys also pray five times a day, split over three sessions. Correct. Okay. So um, prior to – who? when did Judaism begin? When was, when was its commencement and who was it with? About 3,000 years ago with the Hebrews. Yeah, with with, wait, wait, with the prophet. On. It didn't begin ultimately with the prophet. God spoke to I mean, you, you follow those a prophet, standing right? on one side. You, you don't follow a prophet. Wait, hold on one second. So we follow God who gave us his instructions. Now, God did utilize Moses to bring those people who stood on Mount Sinai out of Egypt. Yes, he utilized Moses, but we don't follow he Moses. Utilized, he utilized Moses. Right. So was but, Moses a prophet of God? Yes. Okay. Prior to Moses, was there any prophet sent by God to mankind or to anybody? No. no. So there was no prophet of God on earth. But the only revelation, according so revelation to commenced the with Torah, Moses. revelation commenced with Mount Sinai. Prior to that, there was no revelation on earth. No. So what about Noah, Abraham? Abraham. That wasn't a national like, revelation to humanity. Are you saying that God speak to people and tell them to build a boat? Or... Were there no prophets? Yeah, is that, were there no prophets of right. God? Were there, was prophet... there nobody worshiping God? Was there no Wait, message from God on earth? Hold on. A prophet is not someone who speaks to God. If it's like that, then we're all prophets. A prophet is someone who delivers a message from God to humanity. That's all right. So Islamically, we have a differentiation. 
um, a prophet is one who is inspired by God. Um, and a messenger is one who is inspired by God and is ordered to convey the message along with that. So my question is, prior to Ju the commencement, so I understood from you, Ju Judaism commenced with Moses. Prior to Moses, were there any, was there anybody on earth worshipping God according to how he wanted? No. Mount Sinai is where our religion commenced. Back then, it was a tribal system. So he used a specific tribe to get that message out, to almost be the people that he would use as an example. I'm sorry, are you saying that Judaism is not an Abrahamic faith? It's not necessarily yeah. an Abrahamic faith. That's what you're saying. Because, where, where is wait, Asher? Wait, Has he gone? Hold on one second. Now, we know that Asav was a grandson of Abraham, and Asav gave birth to a Moloch and Edom and many other groups that we don't consider Abrahamic today. So, no, I mean, Judaism is not ultimately an Abrahamic faith because you could be a descendant of Abraham and not be part of Israel. In other words, Judaism began on Mount Sinai with God giving over his instructional will to whoever was willing to listen. Now, the rabbis yeah, my, point, teach, my, point, my point is this. Uh -huh. Is Abraham just a regular human being like you and me? Absolutely. So we don't elevate anyone to oh, some angelic status. There's, no, there's, not, there's nothing special about Abraham then. Ethically, absolutely. What? He chose to follow the one God. Yeah, based on what? Based on logic. Logic? logic. Really? Absolutely. So, so he, he God didn't... Yeah, he Who didn't, else yeah, you recognize as a prophet besides Musa? Wait, 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 wait. No, hold on. God didn't give him any special instructions outside of the 10 tests that God gave him. In other words, Abraham had the same choice that we all have to want to do the right thing. And that's because everyone is born with some basic sense of morality. But Abraham wasn't given some huge revelation that convinced them to follow God. Okay, look, why did God so why did you break send idols? Moses? Why did you break idols? What was, yeah, what was the need for God sending Moses um, the revelation at Sinai? Hold on one second. Well, Abraham never broke idols according to the Torah. Really? Absolutely. Okay. Well, that's to later legends. Okay, now, the reason God revealed his will to all of humanity, I mean, even the rabbis teach that those who stood up on Sinai were more of non-Hebrew stock than of Hebrew stock, was to help elevate man from the animal, to give him a, a higher standard to aspire to. Clearly, I mean, he loved the world so much that he reached down with his laws to train us individually, morally, to make us better people, which is why there is no need for some further revelation that only changes narrative. You know, I, I, prior, think prior I think you're talking more... I think you're talking more genealogy than, than, than faith and religion. Yeah. So, brother, prior to that. To what? Prior to um, this revelation to rescue humanity, as you said, um, was, was there no need for it? Did the previous generations not need this same revelation? Were they saved? We see that people were punished before the giving of the Torah for breaking ethical commandments that were in the Torah. For example, we know that no, your, 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 your narr narrative is commencing from the Torah. It's like almost from your perspective, there was no life on earth prior to the Torah. Like no, Adam and Eve, there was Adam no revelation. Exactly. Interesting, man. To listen to this, brother. There was no revelation to humanity before the Torah. Correct. I'm, I'm really confused, man, because I've, 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 I've always thought it was an Abrahamic faith, and you guys. Um, uh, and yeah. Moses, believe, Moses, uh, Moses um, brought the same type of uh, message down as um, yeah, um, which is why, Abraham which is why, and Adam brother, and Eve and, yeah, mm -hmm. is brother. This is why I'm why I'm, why I asked him what type of Jew he, he is. Because I don't think there's a conflict of interest. I mean, most you Jews sound a little bit like, like a heretic I, Jew. It doesn't sound like a, no, the standard Jewish coincide belief, with what you're talking about. Islam's view of what Judaism believes. But I'm telling you, Judaism believes... No, 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 no. I'm not talking Judaism Islamic view of, of, of... Sorry, one sec. One second. I'm not saying what Islam views Judaism to be. I'm talking about what the consensus view that Jews themselves talk about. Like the brother who was on earlier, he read from a website, which was a Jewish website, where... He counted your your friend Asher um, on the fact. No, I'm uh, Asher. Do you recognize somebody as as a prophet? So you, it's like you deny prophets. Are you a heretic sect? In Jew what's the name of your What's the name of your sect? <laughs> I don't deny. Prophets. I want the name. Wait, wait, hold on one second. No, no, hold on one second. I don't deny prophets. Only because that's why I Hold on one second. Who else do? 
Uh, Who else do you accept as a prophet besides Musa, alayhi salam? <laughs> I'm quoting the Torah, okay? Yeah, the, Torah yeah. called, the Torah calls Moses a prophet. The Torah does not call David a prophet. Only because you read something on some website, I'm sure well, you wouldn't tolerate me saying that I read something about Islam on a website, even though it contradicts what the Quran says. Judaism just just website. tell us which, okay. which no, no, Jewish no, no. group you belong to. You. Orthodox Judaism. That's not a group. That is not a group. There are different types of groups of Jews. Which one are you? Well, in a respectful manner, I don't think that you know enough about Judaism to okay. even make. Okay, who is your, who is your, who is the Jewish leader that you follow? I'm a rabbi myself. So you have no what Jewish scholar, leader. What scholar? What scholar? What scholar do you follow? I can tell you a bunch of scholars: the Rambam, Rav Sadagon, the rabbis from the Talmud. You're not really asking questions. Brothers, like brothers, I answer. think we've given him a chance, right? We've been giving him a chance to explain who he is. But it doesn't sound like he's any um, conventional Jew that we're speaking to here. No problem. And I'm glad that this call is being recorded because I'm going to put it up on my website. And so we'll see what people have to say. This shows... Yeah, it's pretty strange. That you said that, it's still, that Islam is similar to Judaism because, uh, besides these, but it's totally off than, than Islam. Because we no, believe no, no. in the Abrahamic faith. Honestly. We believe in Abraham. No, no. And, um, I Noah, said Islam is similar in terms of ethics. You change the narrative, and that's what you've done. No, we I, didn't. But we just for asked example, you, like you explain, believe in Jesus. We explained. We asked you to explain the source of your religion, Mount and Sinai. What that's was the, the need source. of it? Yes, provide pr prior to that to elevate humanity. There yeah, was yeah. no religion said, before Mount prior Sinai. To, prior, prior to Mount Sinai, mankind did not need revelation. There was no prophet. Uh, you you accept Abraham existed, but he means nothing to you. No, so hold on. <laughs> why was Jew? Why? Why? I what was said, the need? What was the need before Sorry, Mount what Sinai? Was, what was the need for the revelation to occur at Sinai? There was no need for it before. Why was it needed now? To introduce ethical monotheism to the world. If you want me to explain why? from Genesis why didn't chapter, the, why didn't the world second. need it before? All right. You you haven't answered the question. Why no. didn't the world need it before? <laughs> I'm answering it, but no, you keep you on... You said the same thing that we, you already second. told us. No. But why why didn't asking, the world need it before? What's brother? the foundation of my religion? Now, Genesis chapter 3... You're using your religion the fall of to justify... Man. I'm trying to explain it to no, no. you. You're using Wait, something second. that exists I'm using to explain why it came into existence. Tell you. Oh my gosh. Our religion begins on Mount Sinai. That's the only revelation that God ever gave to humanity according to our book. Now, Abraham is the key figure in the narrative before Mount Sinai. He was the first one to understand the idea and the need for ethical monotheism. He didn't have all the commands that God gave later on, but he was the first to push away idolatry. God used him, and it clearly says in Genesis why he used him. Did I bring up idols? Did I bring up idols who said there was no such thing as idols with Abraham? No. Do you, you not say that Abraham and idols did not mix up no. together? But you brought up a story of Abraham smashing idols, which only appears in a later legend. That never happened, according to the narrative in the Torah. God used Abraham because he would lead others into the same ethical path, but this is before the Torah was given. Isn't that what a prophet does? Monotheism. <laughs> Isn't that what a prophet does? No, no. But the job of the prophet... Lead. No. Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel... If you read the narrative, these prophets arise when Israel begins to stray from the Torah. Exactly. They're there to bring, That's right, why prophets are there. Right, That's why prophets to bring come back to, to the bring Torah. Them back. But the Torah exactly. was given till after Abraham, not before. That you is, can't call look, Abraham. Torah's, listen, listen, Torah brought the laws, right, of what God commands. Correct. But that does not mean, so he was a messenger, right? But prophets did come before and after Moses, meaning that the prophets came to bring back the the people that were astraying to back to God, right? So that's what a prophet is, right? So but Abraham brother, was a prophet. Brother, and he did he bring doesn't out, accept actually, that. He doesn't accept that. He said there was no prophets before. Correct. He doesn't so, he believe Abraham was a prophet. I don't believe Abraham was a prophet. Do, do you believe there were human beings on the earth prior to the Sinai? Yes. Were, were any of them worshipping God? Abraham was worshiping God to his understanding of God. There's only Abraham. No, God's understanding. No, one second. God, God I never said only Abraham. Those who came after him, 
also followed in the footsteps of Abraham. Some of them did. Like I said, Asaph, mm-hmm. who came from Abraham. Prior to Abraham, prior to now, Abraham, was there, there anybody thing, worshiping God? One second, relax. One second. Okay. You're not There's answering any questions. People like Jacob. I'm trying to answer, but you keep on interrupting. No, you keep even you keep talking those, about what's in your scripture. We're talking about prior to that. Prior to Abraham, it says yes. that Noah found grace in the eyes of God. It doesn't call Noah a prophet, and he did. Mankind way, need need scripture or revelation prior to Sinai. Humanity needed an ethical way of life always. However, that revelation was given at Mount Sinai. Man initially had it in the garden. It says that Adam walked with God. He spoke with God. He knew ethics. However, he felt that he can be ethical without God's instructions. And that's area kicks him out, okay. out of the garden and makes him live by the sweat of his brow. I e out on his own. Just that man needs God. And that is really what happens in Genesis chapter 3 with the whole scenario of the snake striking the man's heel and the man crushing its head. The snake is man's evil inclination, thinking that he could live an ethical life without God. But God is going to rebuild that relationship that was severed in the garden in Mount Sinai by giving us his instructions again. The same instructions that Adam originally had in the garden with him because... He so now you're, so now you're agreeing there was a message before at, uh, before Moses, there was a message. No, there wasn't a message. There was Adam. Adam was Adam's Adam's message. Right, Adam, Adam had a message, God. right? Hold on one second. Adam wasn't even a human at that time. He was walking with God. He was meant to live forever. Okay. <laughs> when he sinned is when humanity took a nosedive. And at Mount Sinai, that relationship was repaired. That's so you say that Adam was, not, Adam was not a human being when he was in the Garden of Eden? He was meant to live forever. No, but you say that he was not human, meaning like human human form or human life form. He was immortal. We're not talking about about mortality and mortality. I'm talking about human form, human life form. I think that's what distinguishes a human from an angelic being, whether they're immortal or not. Yeah, but he was not not an angel. Humanity ultimately began after the fall of man. See, ours is different. We, we, We believe that Adam repented and God forgave him. Absolutely, God forgave him. So like what he you, forgave what him. No, hold on one second. Like he forgave him because we see that God clothes them, but he still had to pay for the punishment. In other words, God cursed humanity, which is why women are still giving birth with pain, which is one of the punishments. No, I, honestly, you know, like for for some reason, I mean, I, I feel like I'm in a twilight zone or something because <laughs> um. No, I this is great swore, because it. I it shows swore that you guys have never spoken to a Jewish person. person. And it's I great have, that I have talked to Jewish people. They say they're the Abrahamic faith. And you're um, the first one to say that you're not in the Abrahamic faith. No, it's absolutely. I mean, clearly, Abraham plays a big part in our religion. I mean, the word faith is not even a, a word found in Torah. In our religion, and religion is also not a word, but like to use. Are you, are you, are you one of those moderate Jewish Jews, the moderate uh, ones? Like, you know, um, again, I'm glad that you're asking all these questions because it shows you've never spoken like to a religious view. The message. Is all inclusive in the sense that you're all welcome to embrace the religion that gave birth to the religion you embrace nowadays. Um, brother, this this man, I, I, you know, sorry, what's your name, Judge? Uh, the the Jewish guy, what's your name? Asher. 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 Yeah. Look, he, I, 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 I get the conclusion from this conversation. Either he's trolling, or he's a, some sort of heretic Jew, because he, what he's explaining doesn't match. Um, anything any Jew you would have spoken to uh, agrees with. Yeah, so this I'm shows me, Jew, and I, Jews, I'll explain um, why. So this shows me why I, you're still Muslim because you've never discussed. Yeah, well, no, 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 no. So far, so far, Asher, Asher, so far, I've not mentioned Islam at all or our belief. All I've done is ask you questions about your faith, and according to you, the world didn't really seem to exist uh, <laughs> prior to Sinai. Prior to Moses at Sinai, so Moses' parents were they not were from they an believers? ethical manner. Hold on one second. You said my religion. Where did my religion begin? And I said Mount Sinai, where God, His revelation was handed over to us. In other words, you could have a God, but if you don't know how to worship this God properly, I mean, He might as well be a foreign God. 
Exactly. The way you worship the God point, of Israel is by brother, keeping sorry, his Asher, Asher, one sec. One, one sec. Your point, I mean, your argument, it's in, it infers, it, in fact, it even, you've even said that prior to this revelation, mankind, if they needed this revelation and they didn't have it, then they weren't worshipping God. You said there was no revelation before Sinai. There was no revelation. Before. Ibrahim only knew God through logic. God didn't reveal to him how to worship him. He, he invented his way of worshipping God. Well, he's an innovator or a scientist yeah. or something, like an innovator so, or something. I mean, if you know what Judaism believes more than I do, can you show me a verse where it shows that God taught Abraham and Noah how to sacrifice? Well, listen, there are, there are black Israeli Hebrew, what are they called? Hebrew Israelites. Israelites. They claim Israelites. to be Jewish, just like right. you claim to be Jewish. Do you okay. recognize them as Jews? I recognize anyone who acknowledges the Torah is true and keeps they don't it. They don't recognize you as a Jew. Just so, because you claim to be a Jew doesn't mean you're a Jew. I don't know what your point is here. That the you want to discuss is, what the Torah says? No, the point is you're making a representation that you represent Jew, uh, Judaism. All right? But everything you've said so far doesn't correlate to what conventional Judaism preaches. Then I don't really think you know what Judaism really preaches. And if it's in terms of who accepts you as the religion. I asked you what type of Jew you are. You couldn't, you couldn't tell me. I could speak to any other Jew. They'll tell me I'm this type of Jew or that type of Jew. I follow this. Okay, let me, let, me, let, me, let me read this to you. Let, let me read this to you. Are you a Shiite you or, or are you Sunni? Um, we're Sunni. So let me, so Shiites let me, let me consider you Muslim. Wait, hold on one second. With Shiites and some... No, that's some Sufi, a completely it, different topic. Uh, that's a completely no, no. different topic. So that's far, exactly we're not even talking about said. Islam. We're just huh? trying to validate your claim uh, well, that you're Jewish. You're telling me what Judaism believes and you're Muslim. You claim to be a Jew. You if I can't tell you what Islam you to, believes, do you go to a particular synagogue? Yes, I do. Which one? It's called Young Israel. Okay, Young Israel. So we'll look that. Do you have a website? Yes. Torah I, I think this young man has started his own religion. It sounds like it. Young Young the Israel is TorahJudaism.com. It's, it's like some New Age Judaism. Great. No, this is great. By the way. I'm so far, nobody's insulted you. Nobody's been rude to you. Let me read this to you. Let me read this to you. Let me read this to you real quick. Okay, Abraham, Abraham in Genesis 12 25. The story begins with a divine call for Abraham to go for yourself from your land, from your birthplace, and the house of your father to the land that I will show you. This is accompanied by promises of great blessings. So it goes on by saying, But when Abraham, Sarah, and nephew Lot arrive in the land that God has shown him, Canaan, severe hunger forces them down to Egypt, where beautiful Sarah is abducted by King Pharaoh. After being punished by God, Pharaoh realizes that he is the holy people and sends them off with great riches. So, I mean, um, it, it clearly says that, you know, God but has you spoken to the Torah there. I mean, you're reading a book about the Torah. I mean, I never Genesis heard... 12, 25? Genesis 12, 25. Abraham takes center stage in the biblical book of the Genesis in three portions of lack, lack, lack you're reading the commentary. But you're reading a commentary. I mean, that's not what it says. No, no, no. I, I'm, I'm reading to you Genesis 12, 25 in English. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting that the way you chose to discuss the topic is to tell me whether that I'm not really Jewish and I don't really believe in Judaism. I mean, that just shows the yeah, yeah, dialogue Asher, you have. Yeah. With Asher, were you born Jewish? No. Is your parents Jewish? Nope. So when did you become a Jew? 20 years ago. And just like I became a Jew, but you could also become a Jew. Yeah, how did you become a Jew? Through conversion. Who, how did you convert? There's a conversion process. Again, like you're getting off the topic here. So you don't have to be born to a Jewish mother to be a Jew? Wow. Well, this is the first time I'm hearing this now. I thought right. you couldn't be a Jew unless uh, one of your family members or your father or your mother was a Jew. I don't think you guys have ever read the Bible. Like, why do you, you think there's a small? Is? Why do you think there's a small population of Jews than uh, the Islamic Christianity? Jaffa, uh, this, this is some heretic group of, uh, that we've got here. It's interesting. I mean, if though. people could become Jews, they'll become Jews left to right. You'd be a large population right now, wouldn't you? I mean, are you actually Jewish or are you Christian? Do you know who Issa's great great grandmother was? No, who? Ruth. Now, was Ruth of Hebrew stock? Wait, wait, wait. With Jesus genealogy. You guys are pretty. Uh, you guys Jesus don't know much about the Bible. genealogy goes by the father, right? He didn't have a father. The God was God. Uh, 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 bro, he, he wants right? you to. He wants you to debate based on the biblical scriptures, right? So far, we haven't even established uh, the that. Jews we're, genealogy we're goes by the father, that. not the mother. All right, first of all, 
right? Mm -hmm. And uh, and for some reason in the Bible they have two genealogies of Jesus, mm -hmm. all right? So I'm not I'm not understanding how you coming up with um Ruth was from the tribe of Moab, and I'm surprised you guys don't know that. But it seems like the way you want to discuss it is by telling me that what I believe is not Judaism. Now, I haven't told you what you believe is not Islam, but I guess that's a good tactic just to kind of deflect. It's not, it's not a game or a tactic. We're no, just trying to understand who you are. If and if you talk about, about, about Islam, all, all right. of us will tell you the same exact answers. All right. right I'm an Islam. open book. I have over 800 lectures on my site, TorahJudaism.org. <laughs> I mean, less you think I've created my own religion, and I'm discussing with many people, I even have two discussions with Muslims. I think I'm pretty accepted as someone who's Jewish who teaches Judaism. Now, I don't know who you guys are. What religion are your parents? To accept, uh, we're Sunni Muslims. We're Sunni Christians. Muslims. Yeah. Actually, what, what religion are your parents? Christian. They're Christian. They're Christian. Okay. And you converted to Judaism. Why yeah, didn't you convert absolutely. to Islam? Why did you choose Judaism? Like I said before, why would I convert to a later belief system that only changed narrative and ceremony, but never improved on the ethical? In other words, if God wanted a message for humanity, why would he consider it a much later message, especially... But, bro, you so far have not... You, add or take you, away from it. Sorry, Hold on one so second. far, you haven't God told said us why there was a need for this message. Hold on one second. God said... Don't add or take away from the Torah. Why should I go further? Are you saying the Torah wasn't enough? Well, of course you believe it was enough. You believe it was corrupted. Even though we have Torah scrolls dating back from 200 years before the destruction of the Second Temple. But I guess it became corrupted around the time of King David. Yeah, well, it was corrupted, right? So it was corrupted. No, no. You believe it was corrupted. You just said it. No. <laughs> I said that you believe it was corrupted. I mean, this is a great tactic. But it's not making Islam look good because it's deflecting every question. I told you exactly Who's making all that noise? Who's making all that noise? Who's making that noise? Bro, well, if you ask any Sunni Muslim, they'll give you the same same answer. You're giving the wrong answer than any other Jewish person I ever talked to. I don't think you've ever spoke to any Jewish person. So do you have a, I have. Like I'm, a I'm, from Chicago, bro. I'm from Chicago. There's a lot of rabbis and a lot of Jewish synagogues all around. We talk to them all the time. <coughs> Project, Project Exodus. I know about Project Exodus and all this other stuff. These billboards that you guys have in front of your synagogues and stuff like that. You know, so, wow. um, my dialogues are recorded. That's why your dialogues are recorded. I'm just thinking you're just an What's innovator. Her? I think you're just an okay. innovator of the of the religion. So you know why? Because it sounds so good to you. It sounds no, it too good to be it true. It doesn't make sense. That's <laughs> right? what I'm trying to say. Is that you're telling 